process I don't know why is one of my most favourite parts of sewing and it is under stitching so what under stitching means is that when this facing because this is your facing when your facing is underneath like that it can sometimes roll back on itself and if you under stitch it put it correctly where it's meant to be um, and I just love actually love doing it now there's going to be a bit where you get to your corner where your waist waist tie necktie is you're only going to be able to get to probably there and there because you can't get into corners but literally what you do is you have your facing this is the good side this is going to be your facing and you just push your seam allowance onto your facing and stitch as close to your seam as possible so I've edge stitched so this is obviously on on the facing it's hard to kind of show you so that's it's it's on the inside on the facing but it just means that it's sort of put a bit of weight behind behind it so that when I press that it's not going to roll back it's just going to be lovely and flat so now that I have pressed that can you see how sort of crisp crisp it looks okay so the next step is to actually the facing needs sewing to the bodice um, so we're going to have a, a line of top stitching we're going to literally stitch all of that facing at that height so see where see where I've overlocked we're going to stitch all the way around there to hold the facing down and then that will show on the front now I didn't have any thread to to match this blue and I don't want to use um, just a random blue so I've actually chosen to pick out the black so I'm going to have black top stitching around and whether that is you know to everyone's taste or not it's kind of what what I've got when I ordered this from Rainbow Fabrics what I should have done was actually ordered the matching Gutterman thread that you can do um, that's a service that they provide um, but I didn't so what I'm now doing is pinning that facing down so that when I start sewing around I know that it's in the right place all in place so I can just now stitch around that so that is what I'm going to do now so before I sew all that down on that bit of face in there I've just put a me made label so I'm just going to stitch that in before I attach that down right so I've stitched right round there so when you then look at the front of the item now of the garment you've got that top stitch line so just sort of check that there's no puckers or anything which there isn't so I am happy with that so 
we've attached the two York pieces to the back and then we'll just stitch those so we stitched right along the back and the yorks so that then that so this is inside out so we've now got the back which is your two york pieces and your back section so I've finished off that seam right along right along where the york is and pressed it so then Well, you've got that detail there now that along the back I'm just going to edge stitch it oh, you may not be able to see it very well but we've just got that edge stitching along there just finishes that off nicely so we're getting closer to the end what is the next bit to do? So we now need to just fold all this over and we literally just need to pin the arms, the underarms and all the way down the side seams. Sewn up, up the side seam so we just need to Put in the curve there, where the arm, but it where it goes underneath your armpit, and then I'm going to turn it the right way around, and probably for the first time in this so long, it actually looks like you could wear it. Is more of a, a top. So, as I say, I'm going to overlock the edges and I'm going to just press those. So, we have already nearly finished. Now we've got our top with the side seams all done so we are nearly done we literally have the cuffs left to do so with the cuffs you fold them short sides together pressed and ready to be attached with the garment right sides out so with it being like this slip one cuff inside each armhole so the raw edges are together so Raw edge, raw edge, pop it inside. So this is where you might have to ease in a bit. So that's the cuff and that's that other bit. I've got a little bit too much fabric so it needs easing in. So it says to, to have in, encased them in there so all the raw edges are there. So at the minute the cuff is on the inside. So I've sewn each cuff into the inside and then 
finished off with the overlocker and then I'm going to peel the cuff from the inside and it is going to just turn over like that to the outside so it's then on the outside so then it's going to be pressed and then I'm just going to put um, hand stitch cover stitches in the top and in the bottom just to hold it in place so that that is how you finish it off that way you can just turn it out on itself and and do it a different way but I do prefer that that finish on it so I'm going to turn them both over press them hand sew those hand sew the end of my ties and then I'm going to actually leave it just to settle overnight before I then do the hem and on the hem I am literally just going to turn it over and over again I'm going to try it on first because if you remember I lowered it by about four inches because I wanted to wear it with leather trousers so um, so that is it so that's a couple of little things that I'm going to do which are, are pretty easy to do so as I say I've filmed this over about three or four hours so I've got a lot of editing to do and um, so I hope it all sort of comes together okay and you understand what I'm trying to do hope you can then go off and, and sew your own Stevie there's at least two people that wanted me to do this so I hope it really helps you um, it's been a lovely fabric to sew with it's a viscose crepe from Rainbow Fabrics and I will type any um, anything that you might need to know in the description box below um, so you can go and have a look at those items um, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and please subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more from me. Until next time, bye!